I named my hair Donna. That's crazy. <laughs> People be like, that girl be talking to her hair. And I do. Yeah. Sometimes you don't, it seems crazy and people might even call it crazy. Mm -hmm. But you can also call me crazy at the bank. Hello. Oh, okay. Hello there. <laughs> Hey everyone, I'm Morgan Debon, a passionate entrepreneur and life advisor. With the Journey Podcast, you'll discover that success isn't about the destination, it's about the journey. I'm sharing stories of amazing people who've taken control of their lives. Join me on my own journey to discover the secret sauce behind reaching success with permission from no one else. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the Journey Podcast. I'm really pumped today because I have the most incredible woman here, Tabitha Brown. <gasps> Thank you. Welcome to the journey. Thank you. We're going to talk all things entrepreneurship, being a business by being yourself, and how to get there. So many of you all have requested the Tabitha come on the podcast. You were probably in the top two. Really? Yes. Well, thank y'all. Yeah. <laughs> and I think it's because this generation and the generation coming up after us, mm -hmm. they really do not want a normal nine to five, like right. at all. Mm -hmm. And there's a difference between how we've had to build this business and how maybe they're going to do it. But I think the fundamentals are probably the same. And so mm -hmm. I would love to just hear more today about your journey and how you've made those adjustments, the decisions that you've had to make, the people you've had to surround yourself with. In this podcast, we talk a lot about making wealthy decisions, like what are things that you've done to save your time? Mm -hmm. You have a family and you really at this point have a family business in a lot of different ways as well. So mm -hmm. that's what we'll talk about today. All right. Very good. So for those people who aren't as familiar with you, how do you describe yourself these days? Oh, um, I feel like I just be like, uh, I'm Tab. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm an entertainer. I always still refer to myself as an actress first, just because that's what I've been doing the longest. Mm -hmm. But most people don't know me from that first. But I am. I'm an actress. I am an entrepreneur. I am an author, mm -hmm. right? A host. Mm -hmm. But most importantly, I'm a believer. I'm a wife. I'm a mom. Yeah. All those things. So, yeah. When did you first move to L.A. and become an actress? Uh, well. Or were you an actress story. first and then moved to L.A.? Yeah. So okay. my very first attempt was 98. Okay. <laughs> but I won't in LA. I was in Orange County. Mm -hmm. Moved back to North Carolina for five years, came back to LA wow. in 04. Wow. Yeah. And then what made you come back? Acting. Okay. Yeah. I've always been chasing the dream. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I would always go back and forth to North Carolina, but yeah. we have been here since 04, but I would go back and forth while my mom was still alive and she mm -hmm. was sick. Mm -hmm. And so I would go for weeks and months at a time right. and come back and forth. But after she passed away, I've been here ever since. Wow. Yeah. And what was that time like for you when you were still becoming, you were still chasing the dream? Oh, honey, it was a lot of work, you know, jobs. I worked at Macy's. I yeah. worked in call centers. I worked at nursing homes, you know, while auditioning, while going to acting class. Mm -hmm. Also, while booking work, right? Yeah. I did a lot of, like, music videos, infomercials, mm -hmm. commercials, short films, theater, feature films, zero budget, no budget. Yeah, that's right. $5, whatever <laughs> it was. I've done it all over, you know, plus 20 years of a career of pursuing the dream. Yeah. So, but it, there were days where I felt like, oh Lord, is this ever going to happen? Yeah. But I just had this feeling. And so I just never let it go. I, I had to keep on doing it because it also gives me so much joy. Mm -hmm. So even if I had those times where I'm like, okay, I'm working this job just so I can make sure my husband is my partner, right? Yeah. And so we got to pay these bills together. That's right. I want to make sure that I'm, you know, doing my part. Mm -hmm. It would still be like, okay, I'm going to work this job right now, but I'm going to go to this audition yeah. or, I'm, you know, oh, I booked the gig, you know, right. I make $5,000, but I might not book another gig for another year. Right. So, but I did it. That's and, beautiful. And I'm grateful for it. You so. did do it. You're here. Yeah, absolutely. When do you feel like was that inflection point for you when it was from, okay, intermittent to consistent? Not until I started doing content. Okay. Right. So, and then the journey changed mm -hmm. because I never wanted to do content. I didn't want to do mm -hmm. videos or any mm -hmm. of that as an actor. Mm -hmm. The internet was kind of a slow thing to pull in entertainers. Yes. And we used to be told like in acting classes or workshops or casting directors, like don't be on social media. You mm. know, the producers, directors, Hollywood won't take you serious if you're mm. doing content type of thing. So we kind of stayed away from it. Mm -hmm. And so I was afraid to do content. I only started doing content because I had a dream and prayed about it and God revealed to me to start doing videos. Wow. And I was afraid to do it, but mm -hmm. I was living a life of obedience. Mm -hmm. And so that was 2017 mm -hmm. when I started. 
And then I think I had my first viral video December 30th of 2017. Mm-hmm. And 2018, it's like things just took off and it's been up ever since. Wow. Yeah. When you had that inflection point where you were like, okay, I'm a reluctant mover uh-huh. in this world uh-huh. of content and digital. And then it started to work and you started to get that feedback from our community. Then what did you do? Like, how did you then embrace it? I embraced it anyway, even though I didn't want to do it. Okay. I was like, okay, Lord, if this is what you're calling me to do, yeah. I'm going to be consistent. Yes. I'm going to just keep showing up. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be myself, mm-hmm. right? Because that was the other thing. I was also entering into a new space of being free. Yeah. Because I had conformed for so long working in corporate America, also as an actor. I was covering my accent. I was yeah. wearing my hair one way. I was yeah. dressing one way. I was doing everything that I thought could help me that win. That you're supposed to do. Exactly. That's what they to say. To fit in. Yeah. But God was like, how are you going to stand out if you're trying to fit in? Amen. And so I was taking layers off of myself. Mm-hmm. And that was also a, a struggle because I was working off of old habit right. and being triggered like, oh, what are people going to think about me? So mm-hmm. I was also having to take off the layer of, I don't care what nobody thinks. Mm-hmm. Like, Lord, please fix me to where I don't care anymore what somebody think about Taya. Mm-hmm. And that was an everyday thing that I would have to work through. Mm-hmm. But as things started to happen, in the beginning, nobody was watching my videos. Right. Right? Be like 30 people. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, okay, Lord, what you got me doing? Okay. <laughs> I don't know what's going on it's here. Like, I'm going to keep going. You told me to do this, yeah. but I don't see these thousands of people that you promised me would watch. That's right. And I started doing videos like July of August of 2017. First viral video, December 30th of 2017. And I still didn't know what I was doing, Mm -hmm. right? Because I understood acting, yes, right? Even producing, right? But content and the internet, I had no real idea of... I didn't know you can make money doing it. Right. You, I knew I had friends that were doing it. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, they making money. But how they making money? Like, yeah, like, like I don't understand this. Mm-hmm. I knew SAG. I mm-hmm. was like, wait, is it SAG? Like, they were like, no. Nah. <laughs> so all I knew was, you know what? Don't worry about that part. Right. That will come. Mm-hmm. Right now, I just want to focus on being obedient mm-hmm. and doing it every day. So mm-hmm. I just kept being consistent and just doing it every day. And then opportunity just started to happen and deals started to come. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so then who was your first hire on your team? I had a manager that I brought on, okay. Stephen Love. Yeah. He was a producing partner, mm-hmm. right? So he and I had started trying to like create a TV show for me. Mm-hmm. And he's, you know, a film producer. Yeah. And I had a, a old manager because I already had an agent and right. manager for years. Yeah. But when I started doing like these videos and my first video went viral mm-hmm. and it was a Whole Foods video, the TTLA sandwich. Ah, and Whole yes. Foods had reached of course, out yeah. and they wanted to partner with me. Yeah. So I had reached out to my agent and manager like, what at we the do time. With this? And they were like, oh, this is just kind of like, you know, uh, like 15 seconds of fame type of thing. Like yeah. it's just, we don't Little really they do know. anything with that. And I was like, no, I feel like it's something mm-hmm. and I don't want to like miss out on this opportunity. And so I was like, well, Maybe the journey I'm about to go on, y'all can't go with me on this journey. Like, because mm. they also, to their defense, they didn't understand yeah. social media at that time. Right. There was no department for social media back yeah. then, right. right? Yeah. And a lot of agencies, no digital space. Right. And so I hit Steve and I was like, hey, I need you to be my manager. He was like, I, I can't, I, I'm not a manager, I'm a producer. I was like, yeah, but I prayed about it and God showed me you. So I'm going to start giving you this 10%. That's right. And so that was my first person that I brought on. Oh, wow. Stephen Love. And now he's still my producing partner, uh-huh. but now he's my CGO. So we do so many other things together. Incredible. What does CGO stand for? Oh, Chief Growth Officer. Yeah. We talk a lot about org charts here uh-huh. because I think one of the things that can be deceiving on social media is it looks like it all just happens so naturally. Ooh, it looks right. like it's so effortlessly. You know, it's like, okay, she's got the magazine cover. You've got New York Times bestseller. You've got a new book out. You've <laughs> got, you know, YouTube. Then speaking engagements. And it's actually an entire engine behind yeah. the scenes. Oh, yeah. What work have you had to do to for yourself to be able to receive all these opportunities across so many different industries? I, I didn't even mention CPG. I mean, you have products oh, yeah. in retail <laughs> and Target. Like, yeah. it's a lot. Yeah. How did you start to, like, then become this media and business empire? I think for me, everything had to make sense for me. Right. So when I first started doing content, all these things that I have now that have happened literally in the last six years, Mm -hmm. I didn't have the idea to do them all. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. But I was walking in obedience. And so everything had to be in alignment. Mm -hmm. So I was doing these cooking videos. Mm -hmm. Right. And I would use different seasonings, but the majority of my seasons are always salt free. Yes. And so I would tell people like, you know, the reason why I'm, you know, mostly salt free because I know my family dynamics. So it was a thing. So people knew like 
Tabby make us all free, you yeah. know, dishes or whatever. Right. And so they were like, you should do your own seasoning, Tab. And I was like, you know what? So I started trying to play with herbs and stuff myself. And mm -hmm. I was like, well, I've never done this before. So I prayed. I was like, Lord, if it's meant for me to do seasoning, mm -hmm. send me a partner. Mm -hmm. And then McCormick reached out to me. Mm -hmm. It was like, oh, we want to partner with you on a video. It was 2020, just doing a cooking recipe. Mm -hmm. And I did that, thinking nothing of it. And they came back after, and they were like, you ever thought about doing your own season? I was like, I have, right? <laughs> Actually, yes. Yes. <laughs> and so that partnership happened naturally. Right. But it was also something that made sense. Mm -hmm. And so in doing that, I was like, well, the only way I can do it is if we could do a salt free, because that's, you know, how I could. Yeah. And they were like, oh, we've never did like a salt free collection like that. And mm -hmm. I was like, well, here we are. We can do yes. it, you know, together. And so they did. Mm -hmm. The same thing with Target. Mm -hmm. During 2020, I was what they would call Target family. So yes. they would send me, you know, different things. Mm -hmm. And I would just do my regular content, but using Target products. Right. And I've never been a person that where I wanted to, like, sell you something. Yeah. I just want to show you how I use mm -hmm. it. And if you like it, and you can see it could be useful for you, you'll try it. Right? Yes. Like, salesy stuff, it made me feel like, oh, car mm -hmm. salesman. I don't like that. Mm -hmm. And so that was like a natural, organic relationship. And then Target came to me and said, do you have any other ideas or anything else you want to do? I was like, well, yeah, you know, I love clothes. I went to school yeah. for fashion for a little while. You know, of course, I love food and cooking. Mm -hmm. And so they were like, we have an idea. Yeah. And so when they pitched their ideas to me, it was, had never been done before. They yep. gave me all four categories That's of the store. I was going to say, you're the only person. I'm the only I'm, person who's ever done that. And I, these are like, you're saying it so casually, but this is like a big deal. <laughs> you know, we work with Target at Blavity because we work on the media side with them. Yeah. And I always get the RFPs for your brands to support the launches of new things. Mm -hmm. And I'm always like, oh, they're spending money, money to promote your stuff, but the yeah. reason they're doing it is because it sells. Yes, it does. Right? Uh -huh. And uh, to sell across multiple categories is like literally unheard of. Yeah. So but yeah. I just had to say, you know. But thank you. I'm grateful. <laughs> the reason that happens is I have always been honest with my fan base, right? With my mm -hmm. followers. Mm -hmm. All I got is my word, mm -hmm. right? So if I don't like it, I'm going to say, mm, this ain't for me. God bless y'all. You know, no, <laughs> yes. no harm for anybody else, but I, this ain't for Tab. Yes. But if I love it, I'm going to say I love it as well. That's right. And so people know that about me. So telling the truth and being like real with your people, mm -hmm. that's what makes them engage. And then they're like, oh, wait, if she said, we can believe it and we'll go buy it and we'll mm -hmm. support her. And I'm so grateful for my people. Honey, they show up for me and I'd be so grateful. So that's how that happened with Target. It was right. natural, organic. It was in alignment. Yes. Neither McCormick or Target ever tried to change me. Beautiful. Anytime I did content, anything I sent in, they were like, we love it. Wow. That, that's great. Because I usually brace myself like, Lord, they're going to send it yeah. back. Yeah. Because I've had a, other people that I've That's a normal experience. Yeah, absolutely. They try to control what you say. Oh, they try yeah. to script you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I won't do that. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, oh, it's too good to be true. Mm -hmm. in, you know, in my mind, like, I'm going to send this scene to see what they say. Yeah. And then when they come back, they're like, oh, yeah, just use this hashtag. I'm like, okay. That's it? So it was easy for me to say yes on bigger partnerships with them. Right. When it came to Donna's Recipe, which mm -hmm. is my hair care line, yes. you know, I had did a big chop in 2017. Right. I was growing my hair back mm -hmm. and honey, she was growing straight at the top. Mm -hmm. And I was cooking live one night. Yep. And I was like, Lord, why is this hair growing straight at the top? I look like Don King. I'm going to have to call her Donna. <laughs> People started laughing yep. and it stuck. Yep. And that was 2018. I've been calling my hair Donna ever since. Yep. I also have stenosis from a car accident mm -hmm. in the back of my neck. And so I had to go through a period of time where I had to sleep flat on my back. Mm. And so it made my hair sort of thin in the back. Mm -hmm. So I was looking for different oils and different things to help grow my hair back. Mm -hmm. But I was also a new vegan. So I was looking at ingredients and right. I was like, mm, I don't know if I want to put this on my head. That's right. You know, coming off of sickness for a year and a half. Mm -hmm. And so I started trying to mix different oils, trying to figure out how to, you know, bring my hair back. I also used to do natural hair. Mm -hmm. but That was always my side hustle because Sam yeah. always had a job. <laughs> and so my business partner, Gina Woods, my husband coaches uh, mm -hmm. basketball mm -hmm. and her son played with my son and so she came to me one day she's like I got this idea and I was like girl like run it by me what is yeah. it and so we met and she had the idea to do a hair care line for Donna I right. was like girl I've been trying to do this for like the last year right. trying to figure it out but my prayer was God send me somebody who can make it easy who for can me. help Let's me go. right yep. and I got very busy this mm -hmm. is 2020 yeah and, and so COVID, I, I mean. Absolutely. Yeah. And I was like, girl, I don't have time to run a business, but I can give you all the things that I know will work. Right. And so Donna's recipe was born that way. Wow. Right. And so just being intentional and being in alignment, like I named my hair Donna. That's crazy. <laughs> People be like, that girl be talking to her hair. And I do. Yes. And the, what she's you a have whole the business. spatula named Sheena. Sheena. Yeah. yeah. Sheena, a whole business. Right. <laughs> yes. So sometimes you don't, it seems crazy and people might even call it crazy. Mm -hmm. But you can also call me crazy at the bank. 
Hello. Oh, okay. Hello there. <laughs> Hello but, there. Because people like, that girl is crazy talking to her hair, <laughs> gave her hair a name. Like, who does that? Donna's Recipe, that's also at Ulta Beauty and at Target Amen. or on our website at Donna's Recipe. Let's go. <laughs> no, but actually, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. So you have all of these different types of setups. I mean, some mm-hmm. of them are joint ventures. Some of them are licensing your likeness and image. Yeah. Some of them are wholly owned subsidiaries. Again, mm-hmm. want people to understand how this stuff works. Yeah. What have you found is the most challenging part of running these different types of entities and relationships? I think the most challenging is realizing each partner is not going to be the same. Mm. Right. And my availability for each partner. Mm. Right. So Mm -hmm. that timing, you got to make sure you have a strict calendar. Mm -hmm. Everything has to go on my calendar. Mm -hmm. Everything. Yeah. Even my breaks. Everything got to be on my If it ain't on the calendar, it don't exist. Yes. And if it's not on there and I miss it, like it's an issue. Right. But when you have so many things happening, it's the only way to make things go smoothly Mm -hmm. because time is of essence. Like, we can't get it back once it's gone. Yes. So that's the most challenging thing. But thank God I have a great team. That yeah. You saw Hope when she walked in. Yes. And she's my logistics manager. She makes sure the calendar is Shout straight. Shout out to Hope. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Hope. That's the most challenging. Okay. And has there been a time in the last few years where you said, this is too much? Mm-hmm. I need to take a step back? I think from 2020 to 2022, it was like nonstop. Yeah. I was go, 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 right. go, 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 go. And I was like, oh, wait a minute. I'm getting tired. Mm. I don't want to burn out. Right. And so the work itself is not too much. It's Mm -hmm. just that I was saying I was doing too much of the work without putting a break in. Okay. And so I realized last year I was like, I got to be very specific about scheduling my breaks. I see. And so I started scheduling breaks just like I would schedule a meeting. That's right. And so I was like, this is how we got to do. So for the last two years, really, I've started doing that. Because you can easily get burned out. Yeah. And for me, I love what I do. Right. Honey, I love it. <laughs> I enjoy the people. I enjoy writing books. I enjoy, you know, making TV shows and yeah. shooting movies. And I enjoy business, right? Yeah. But if I don't take care of me, I can enjoy you're it all asset. day, but then I can't show up. Yeah, you're the asset. So, absolutely. Mm-hmm. So without me, I don't have business. And what do your breaks look like? Are you scheduling them like on a weekly basis or are mm-hmm. you saying on a quarterly basis, monthly, you're going to take a week off? Like walk yeah. me through how you actually do so that. So there's some stuff. some breaks are just like throughout your day, you know, you need a good 30 minute little just get myself together. Yeah. Right. But then there's breaks like, oh, OK, this week my son has a game. I'm not doing anything. I'm going to go. That's a break for me. Like, yeah. I love just being with my son and my husband, like going to basketball games. It's our Saturday routine or Sunday mm-hmm. routine. That is like downtime for me. Mm-hmm. Family time. But then the break, break where I was like, okay, I need to reset yeah. and restore. Mm-hmm. Let's go somewhere. Okay. Like, you know, by the beach or, you know, at a hotel, I ain't got to do nothing. Yeah. They going to cook for me. They going to right. clean up all the things. Yep. So, and I do those like every couple months. Okay. Yeah. That's great. The reason I asked that question is because I am new mom. And oh, so, baby boy, thank you. Yeah. So now I feel like my time in which I would have normally taken breaks throughout the day or mm-hmm. like at night, reset is dedicated to him. Yeah. So I'm like, oh man, when am I going to take a break? Yeah, you got to figure it out. <laughs> you, you, you still need that. Yeah. And now you need it even more. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. It's more important now that you're a mom. Exactly. So mm-hmm. it is a, it's a question I'm asking everybody yeah. selfishly. Yeah. I remember uh, years ago, of course, when I first had my first baby, when I was pregnant with Choice, I remember uh-huh. my mama telling me, when you had that baby, mm-hmm. when that baby take a nap, you take a nap. Yeah. And I'd be like, no, I don't want to go to sleep. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. I would be fine. I'm going to get some stuff done. All right. Baby, when that baby take that nap, you better take that nap, okay? <laughs> I'm like, here, come, come take a nap with me because right. I know your nap yeah. will be longer yeah. if you're sitting right it next to me. It didn't make sense until it did. Yeah, <laughs> That's absolutely. Right. Yeah, it's been its own journey. I am just curious because you do live such a full life. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of people who struggle with that, Mm -hmm. that they get so sucked into their work and they maybe have an abundant life of work like Mm -hmm. you, right? It's like, it is an abundant life. But then they look up one day and they say, I've neglected something over here. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious for you what advice you give to people to help them not get so far in the neglect. Yeah, I think that the first thing is we got to be easy on ourselves, Mm. right? Sometimes we will get so focus on the work and we feel like, oh, X, Y, and Z got to be done. If it's not, it's like life or death. Right. And it's not. Right. Right. I just saw Queen Latifah in an interview and she said some of the best advice she ever got was it ain't that serious. Mm. It ain't that deep. Right. Like Mm -hmm. unless you are out here saving lives in that moment, it can wait. Mm -hmm. Right. So we can have business, but we also can have structure. Mm. 
And I think sometimes what happens is we don't have structure and then that makes us all over the place mm-hmm. and unbalanced. Mm-hmm. Figure out how to balance it. Get you a good schedule. Make mm-hmm. sure that everything is balanced so that you feel balanced. But also when you see that, okay, maybe I did too much on this. Like we got to be truthful and honest with yeah. ourselves. And we got to check in with our people. Right. right. So if you have a family, you check in like, how we you, doing? Yeah. You need me. Do I need me right now? Yeah. Right. Check in right. with yourself and don't be so hard on yourself. Right. Sometimes the parent guilt is a real thing. Yeah. Wife guilt, husband guilt. Yeah. All that, because when you are working, it is a lot. But there's also a reason why you're working. Mm-hmm. So we have to consider all things like, OK, your family dynamic. They have to understand I'm doing this for us. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. But I also know that spending time with you is important as well. I also know spending time by myself is important as well, right? Mm -hmm. So just making sure that all of it balances out, but not being so hard on yourself that it becomes punishment. Mm. Like you feel like, oh, I feel so bad. Like I need to do this. Now you feel it's not a genuine thing. Now you feel obligated where you should be excited to spend time with your family, excited to do work. Mm -hmm. It should both feel good. Yeah. And if you don't feel well about it, then something is not imbalance yeah something is off yeah the resentful the friction Mm -hmm. I think that's probably how I would describe it as well it's like I feel resentful that I have to take this meeting or I feel like I shouldn't be doing this thing that is definitely my own internal signal like okay yeah write it out that's my process write it out Mm -hmm. what is it that you're doing that you don't like to do or that you don't want to do or that you feel like you're trading off something else to do right and then Fix it. That's right. <laughs> like yeah, make a different it. choice. Yeah, make right? a different choice. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Do you have advisors in your life? Oh yeah, mostly financial. Okay. Financial advisor and business. I have a business manager, mm-hmm. and so it just depends. Like I'm always looking at investing, mm-hmm. and so my business manager has hooked me up with financial advisors to mm-hmm. uh, look at stocks because that's not something I'm like. Oh, I don't. I didn't grow up knowing about stocks. Yeah. And I grew up in Eden, North Carolina. Child, stock, <laughs> what's what's that? Yeah, yeah. And so with real estate, with stocks, you know, the money market, all that stuff. I had yeah. to have people who understood that because I didn't want my money to just sit, sit in the bank and not make you know no money. Yeah, so, that's right. Absolutely. We got to say it again. Do not just have wads of cash just sitting. sitting doing you're nothing. losing money because of inflation. Absolutely. It's another episode for another yeah. day. You can even but, do a T bill if you don't want it to do nothing. Just that's right. It, I think it's about five percent right yep. now. A yeah. CD. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Or a treasury bill. Yep. yep. Treasury bill. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm like, we got to get, yeah, come on, y'all. Let's yep. get it. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> I have that. And yeah. then my business manager, anytime I want to like start a new business yep. or if I have an idea, yeah. I run it by her. We look okay. at the numbers, we look at everything. And, you know, that's how So it is she like a CFO ish type role, or what does a business manager mean to you? So for me, a business manager, like, she is kind of CFO when it comes to finances, but also she wears many hats. Yeah. And she's under an umbrella at a large firm. Right? Okay. And so she can help me with money management. Yeah. She can also connect me. She's a connector. I see. So if I say I have an idea and I want to do a sneaker line, yeah. She'll be like, okay, let me set a meeting for you with, you know, she's like a quarterback. Adidas. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. Yeah. That's very cool. We yeah. all need one of those. Yeah. Yeah. But then also like Steven, who's my CGO, yes. he's like the same. Mm-hmm. Right. So right now I'm developing a handbag line. And he knows I want to do vegan luxury handbags. Right. So good. And so he's like, oh, okay. So he found our person. Like they sell bags like in Italy, but yeah. they're all vegan made of like different mm. mushroom leather, apple leather, like the mm. finest leathers that we could find or court leather. And then he'll head that whole thing. Development. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. And then he'll know when we need to hire somebody. Yes. Like, okay, we need to find someone to do this and this. So we go to manufacturers together and, yeah. and things like that. Yeah. How do you make your vision for yourself? I mean, I'm hearing you and I'm like, oh, you've got like probably 20 more things <laughs> that you're like, it's on the list. We're not yeah. there yet. Or when it's time, it'll mm-hmm. be time. But how do you do visioning exercises with yourself? You know what? When I think of things, I feel like if I think of it more than twice in a day, God want me to do something with it, mm-hmm. right? So I'll write it down. But then there's things that I do that are normal, right? It makes sense for me. Mm-hmm. I travel all the time, and people are always looking at my bags that I travel with. Right. So I was like, wow, well, I'm promoting other people's stuff. Hello? I should have my own. I travel all the time. I should have my own travel bag. Yeah. It's a normal it thing for me. Into like, it your fits world. into my life. So mm-hmm. I don't have to advertise. I don't have to push it. I can just simply be like... Oh, yeah, it's my bag Mm -hmm. because it's what I use every day, just like how I cook. Mm -hmm. I make food every day. It makes sense for me to have pots and pans coming, right? right. It makes sense for me to have food at Target, Yeah, seasonings. Like, it's just things that are always in alignment with me. So that's how I envision things. But then I also have a great team. You know, I'm with CAA and Mm -hmm. 
I have meetings with my whole team mm-hmm. and we talk about, okay, what's the vision? Like, what's a dream list look like? Yeah. And I'm like, okay, of course I want to do movies. What kind yeah. of movies? I want to do TV. What right. kind of television? So we start putting everything on a board mm-hmm. and we make a list and we look at what is attainable in 12 months, mm-hmm. 18 months, two years, mm-hmm. five years. Like we have a whole setup. It's a lot that goes into it. Yeah. And it's a lot of people. I think, I mean, just with my team and my agents, yeah. it's probably maybe, you know, 26 people. Yeah. yeah. And lawyers, everybody. Oh, honey, the, now you know them lawyers is. The lawyers. <laughs> Over here, hope. Baby, <laughs> we need them lawyers, honey. The lawyers Listen, make, make the world go round. The honey. lawyers yeah. are the, the low-key goats. Yes. Because you can get caught up in the legal terms uh, real quick. Baby, shout out ownership. to Ashley, okay? I got, the, I got one of the best. Especially with your IP, I mean, oh, yeah. so much. Yeah, absolutely. Tell me more about how you structure your content creation. Because sometimes I'm like, did she record this today? Or like, mm-hmm. was this something that you have batched? Like, how do you actually organize your content flow? I don't. You just flow. It, honey, if you, you look at me now, later today, you can probably see a video because <laughs> I'm going to have this on. Yeah. Right? So the only time that anything is calendared is if it's a partnership, like a branded thing. Yeah. And I'll shoot that in advance. Mm-hmm. You know, it has to go through their approval process. Mm-hmm. And then it's calendared for a later date for posting. Mm. But that's like a recipe or, you know, a collaboration. But if it's me just cooking in my kitchen mm-hmm. or if God gave me a word to give, it's in the moment. Wow. It's in the moment. That's the best way to keep it authentic. Because mm-hmm. then I'm not like, oh, let me shoot this and save it. Like, no, honey, I got to be in the real moment. These are my real feelings. This is how yeah. I feel. This is what I had a taste for. That's why I'm cooking it, you know. Right. So that's the way you keep it honest. So then what advice would you give to someone who is perhaps – going through a lot to work themselves into a place where they can then record. There's people who are in our podcast community who Mm -hmm. are scared to just get on camera. I mean, what you're saying is that it's a part of your natural flow. You don't overthink it. Mm -hmm. You're not like, okay, I'm going to shoot these seven videos. I'm putting them in ChatGPT to see if this is what the people want. No, I'm serious. Like, don't have a calendar where every month is a theme. Like, you are just like, I am me. Yeah. And this is what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And you all are welcome to be along this journey with me that's right and see it uh-huh. in real time mm-hmm. like what advice would you give to somebody who aspires to have that level of effortless ease in terms of just being themselves publicly I think that it's self-work that has to be done right you have to get to a place where you accept yourself as you are mm-hmm. that's the only way it works right so we have to get out of the mindset of thinking about what other people are thinking about us and being worried about it being perfect I had a friend and anytime she did a video she tried to make all her words sound perfect like mm. how she was speaking I mm. said girl what are you doing <laughs> who who wants to talk perfect all the time uh-huh. right but I remember I used to be a person who code switched and conformed and did all the things uh-uh yeah I ain't got time for that right so it's really freedom mm. freedom is the best gift we can give to ourselves but if you're not free right if you are concerned about your videos and how they look and how it sounds and oh if people are interested you're not free you're letting somebody else control you so that's it. It's really getting to your freedom. I think that's really what I was trying to get to. It's like, you seem free. Yeah, I am. You know, you seem yeah. free. And that is such a privilege mm-hmm. that you've worked hard to, to be. And yeah. I don't know that I'm though. there yet. Yeah, I don't know that I feel free yet. Partially yeah. because of the work that I do. I feel like I'm so responsible for so many people and things. But it is something that I aspire to get better at. Yeah. It's even more of a reason for you to be free, especially mm-hmm. if you're responsible for others. Yeah. Right? Because right. Are you leading them to be free or are you leading them not to be? No, I don't know. <laughs> right. Y'all tell me. <laughs> I mean, I think in certain places, mm-hmm. like I feel free on the podcast because it's just for me, yeah. you know, but I don't always feel free at work because there's all, you know, you don't want to get sued. You've got all these rules. I have a board. I have all these different things. And I think that that sometimes then gets in my head and I'm like, you know, I can't do this because it's too risky. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you ever have that thought where you're like, mm, this feels risky or really do you, do you not I mean, consider of course, that? I mean, there's still common sense in freedom, yeah. right? There's still thoughts that we make. There's a chapter in the book. It says, uh, break the rules, but not the law. Yeah, right? yeah, I did see that. One. Yeah, was so you, day, can, like you can break the rules 17? sometimes. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, <laughs> you can break the rules. That yeah. it, you ain't gonna break the law, Facts. right? And so sometimes right. you have to be willing to take some risk. Yeah, and despite what people may think, or despite how it may go, mm-hmm. maybe it doesn't work out. Yeah, okay, 
Now we know it didn't work out, but maybe it will. Yeah. And maybe it will turn into something even bigger than it was mm -hmm. and be great. Mm -hmm. But we'll never know if we don't take no risk. Can you tell me about a time when you have had a business or one of your ideas and then you said, you know what, it's not working out. Like, mm -hmm. how did you make the decision to slow it down or shut it down or sunset it? Absolutely. I had a restaurant. I talk about that, too. Mm -hmm. I had a restaurant. And I was in a partnership with Kel My Name. And the building was just not working out. Mm. It, it was so many things that kept coming up that were wrong, wrong, wrong. And prior to us even opening, I just kept having this feeling. Mm -hmm. But I went against the feeling. And mm. so I wasn't surprised within the first year when things were going wrong, mm -hmm. wrong, wrong. I, like It was like one thing after another. And I was like, God, is he is showing me in every way that this is not meant to be. Yeah. And so I had to be obedient in that. And I also was like, you know, just like you, you don't want no lawsuits. Like you don't want a whole bunch of craziness. I was like, honey, if this building ain't working for me yeah. and all these other places around here in the same building. That's right. I, I don't want to be a part of this. And, you know, I'm also responsible for people yeah. coming to eat in my restaurant. Right. And so I was like, oh, no, I got to shut it down. And I got to be all right with it. Mm -hmm. You know, and it hurt me because I loved going in to see the people and loving and feeding the community out there. And yeah. people were flying in from everywhere to come yeah. and eat at the restaurant and to meet me. But at the same time, I was like, I just can't keep that, yeah. right? And closing it down, although I was like, oh, man, this is a loss for me. Mm -hmm. And what I talk about in the book, the loss actually turned into a win, mm -hmm. right? I ended up now having food to Target. Yeah. I also was able to dedicate more time into other businesses. Mm -hmm. And I paid less taxes that year. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Shout out to the taxes. Yeah, because yeah, we're going to pay them taxes. But because of it, yes. it, it was a loss. Right. And so it offset my taxes. That worked out. <laughs> it, worked, it worked out right <laughs> In a year where you were up, yeah. sometimes you got to take I, a little loss. Like, oh, Lord, I thank you. Okay. Yeah, 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 that's not but a bad loss. But that's also loss. learning business. That is right. Yeah. That's right. That's a whole nother chapter. Yeah, yeah. Hiring is something that a lot of people struggle with because mm -hmm. it requires a lot of trust. Oh, yes. Trust of decision making, trust of being able to make sure that they can capture your essence, that they're making decisions in the way that you would want them to be made. Mm -hmm. And then also trust and just letting go. Yeah. How have you developed your ability to hire and bring people into your world? It's everything you just said. Like, it's got to come from here first for mm -hmm. me. Like, it's a feeling. If it don't feel right, it ain't right. Right? I am blessed to have people on my team, like Hope, who mm -hmm. I've known for over 20, shoot, like 25 years. Wow. I have people on my team that I've met while working and mm -hmm. just instantly felt a good spirit, good energy. And I was like, I can use somebody like this. Mm -hmm. And then you look at resources like, OK, first, I'm going to look at your spirit. Mm -hmm. I got to feel that, you know, discernment. I got to be true and trust that. Mm -hmm. Then I can look at your resume. Mm -hmm. And I don't care what your resume say. If that spirit ain't right, baby, you can't Doesn't work matter. the tab. Honey. That's right. It's not worth the risk for me. Yes. Right? I'm never going to sacrifice. But that's how I do it. Mm -hmm. And then I, I move from there. But it's always spirit first for me. That's how I move in everything. I love it. Yeah. So your book is here. Yes. I did a new thing. You did a new thing. And every day is something where you've done a new thing and you mm -hmm. walk us through whatever the thing is and yeah. the takeaways. And then you have your TSAs at yeah. the end, which I'm like, have you used that before? Or is that new for the book? No, I always do. The TSA. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tell me about how the book has been received and what people's biggest takeaways have been. The book, first of all, is one of my favorite things. I've been doing the I Did a New Thing Challenge since yeah. 2014, and people are loving it, right? Of course, it was a New York Times bestseller the first week. I'm so grateful of for course. that. <laughs> and the thing that I think that people have been taking away is that they didn't realize how long it had been since they did something new. Mm. And so they're excited to try new things every day, mm -hmm. right? And it could be something as small and simple as, let me wear my hair a different way. You got yeah. your hair parted in the middle? Put it on the side. That's See right. how I feel, right? Wear yeah. a red lip when maybe you never, you know, do right. that. They're really enjoying it. I saw They're that really Jackson really it. came out. Baby. <laughs> I was when like, I tell you, they showed up, had me out there crying the ugly cry. I was about all the Davis out there, baby. But it was so good. It was so, so good. It was like my birthday all over again. I love that. Yeah. And are you going to continue writing another book? Do you have more in the hopper? I'm, right now, I'm going to work on some children's books. Yeah. <gasps> I'm going to do some stuff for the babies. I love yeah. that. Yeah. And why? Well, you know, I have a children's show yeah. and children are so important, right? Because all of us were once children mm -hmm. and we only get a good 12 years to be kids. Yeah. After that, we would try to adult for the rest of our life. Yeah. And so that's such a special time. So if we can deposit into children good things and 
uh, help them understand that despite how different they may feel or how different they may look, mm-hmm. that we are enough, that we are amazing, right? And just teach them how to love themselves. Baby, I'm doing something right. So I want to do that. I do it on my children's show. And so yeah. it's just, you know, it only makes sense for me to do it as a book. Well, I look forward to reading it to Langston one day. Thank you. Thank oh, you I love that. His name is Langston. Yeah, for Langston Hughes. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. Favorite yeah. poet. Well, thank you for joining today. I hope for those who are watching and listening in that your spirit has come out to them. And certainly to me, I mean, I admire your courage. I admire just how you're able to just be and that you believe that everything will come to you and it has. And then you do the work, right? I mean, it's not just like you're sitting on a beach somewhere. I got faith, but I also do the work. That's right. And I hope to embody that a little bit more. I believe you will. I believe in you. One day at a time. We're on a journey. We won't be hard on ourselves, right? We won't be hard on ourselves.